KE5 NGM here. I think most of you know me from my live stream of the North Central Texas 2 meter simplex net on Friday nights. Uh, if not, I hope that you'll stop by Friday night, 8 p.m. We stream and chat and uh, everybody checks into the net and has a great time. But I figured with all of the traffic that the stream was generating that I might as well see if I couldn't create some content that would be helpful to other hams. And to maybe let everybody see some of the weird projects that I find myself uh, working on. And the latest one here is this um, ICOM IC2730A that I recently purchased for a crossband repeater. And like I was talking about the Simplex Net, I do a lot of Simplex communication. And sometimes that's hard to do mobile. Fort Worth here is a um, kind of a hilly town. You don't notice it until you get into radio. And then you notice that there's an awful lot of uh, rivers and streams and lake bottoms that you pass by so my plan was to get a radio that was reasonably priced uh, from a reputable man manufacturer i haven't ever owned any icom equipment so i would figure i would uh, give it a try so far i've been very impressed with it um, it puts out the specified power on both two meter and 70 centimeter the only issue that i have with it in the crossband mode is since it does get so much activity that the fan has to run an awful long time and if any of you have ever been in uh, networking or anything like that, and you know the network switches that have these small fans, you know that they make a lot of noise. And I don't want any more noise in my shack, um, especially from a whiny little fan like this. So, so far, um, I probably should have started documenting this before I cracked the covers off, but I wanted to get uh, started on it. And then I realized, hey, you know what, I'm going to make a video about this. So the covers um, that it comes with, pretty easy to take off. Um, if you don't plan on modifying your radio, then maybe this will save you the trip of having to open it up and look and see what uh, is inside. You notice it's got a, a like an aluminum alloy kind of pot metal uh, chassis to it that is pretty good at dissipating heat, but it does warm up. And I wanted to see if I could replace this fan with a larger muffin fan, maybe from a computer or something like that, that would uh, give it a little bit more air and at a lower speed. And the first thing I thought about doing was just simply connecting it up to the little fan port on the, on the back here. And I was concerned that when I took this fan out that it would error or it would have some sort of sense in it that the fan was missing, kind of like a stereo amplifier or something like that that will go into protect mode. But I found that this radio, luckily for this project, uh, does not have that. I'm assuming that it has some type of a uh, thermal overload or, or high temp um, switch in it that uh, protects it that way, which will be great. So as long as we can keep it cool, should be good to go. Original fan mounted here on the back, and then the little wire went in through the, through the connection. So what I think I'm going to do is just set this one aside. And I really don't want to modify the radio. I want to leave it to where I could get it back to stock if I, if I ever wanted to um, and not have to, to worry about soldering parts on or anything like that. And I think that this premise is going to work, but like I was talking about, I don't want to cut a hole in the, in the nice little case that it came with here. So I am going to get some uh, black flashing that I have. I think it actually came off of an old dishwasher decorative plate that goes in the front of it and i'm going to cut it to the size and see if i can't mold it to the top of this radio and then line the screw holes up and then i can use that or actually i'm going to do it on this side to have the fan mounted in so that i can cut a hole in it so it'll have a new top on it and then i think this is going to live under my desk um, you shouldn't really ever need to use the the unit itself because of course it's got the detachable face control head and um, should work under there nice and quiet stay cool all of that kind of stuff and uh, we'll start the fabrication on it here in a bit and I'll be back in a bit with uh, progress on how that's going all right so we got a piece of the uh, front of the old dishwasher cut out here and I think what I'm going to do is, you can tell that it uh, will line up perfectly with the width there. Use the bandsaw, by the way, to cut it out. Did a nice job of it. Um, and then I hit it. I've got a stationary disc sander that I use to kind of clean up the edge. And I think it may be a little larger, but it fits in the, 
that fits in the side of the oh no nope, a little too big so i gotta trim off just to just a bit but i can do that i think what we're going to do though is line the screws up like that mark the holes drill the holes and then uh, use the radio itself as kind of a form for it and um, yeah be back in a bit to let you know how that goes i got the screws in the radio with this first piece and now we're going to see if we can just slowly but surely bend this over the top looks like i'm gonna have to put some pressure right there might have to get a clamp or something in a minute but now yeah, i think it's gonna bend all right and then we're just gonna take this slow try not to crease it but if it does it won't be the end of the world because we know that it's gonna be under a desk chilling out hopefully literally Hey, all right. I'm going to say that's not uh, that's not half bad. I think with some more tweaking, and um, this will get us to where we can roll it around on, on this edge. But before I do that, I might uh, put some weight on the top of it, um, cut off some extra. But then again, I might leave it so that I have some more leverage. Not exactly sure how I do it, but we will uh, we'll figure it out. Back with the hole cut out. Seem to go pretty well. Um, I've actually got a hydraulic die cutting set, but I didn't have a, a circle that big, so I decided just to trace out the fan that I wanted to use that's out of an old laser printer and uh, made the circle on the back of it so that I could see it better. Drilled a small little hole and then threaded my uh, scroll saw blade up there with a metal cutting blade and then just kind of free-handed it around there. You can tell there's some jagged edges, but it's gonna be covered by the fan, so nobody will ever know. I'll probably use some little rivets or maybe some tape just to see if I want the fan to suck or blow across the, the top of it. And uh, then once we get it settled, which way's better, which way keeps it cooler, then I'll put the official um, fasteners in there. I guess that was going to wrap this up. I will include a um, video at the end to show kind of it working, and we'll take it from there. It's been about a week now with the radio and crossband repeat mode, and I really haven't had a whole lot of issues with it. In fact, I haven't had any at all. It's worked really well for what I intended. I think the first thing that you'll notice is, is that I got rid of the old laser printer fan and went with a... Noctua fan that I bought off Amazon. I believe it was about $18. I'll put the link to that in the description. I did decide to just tape it down with some of the Nashua foil duct tape that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's really adhesive. Uh, works for heat, works for cold. I don't anticipate anything uh, taking place there. I also decided to put the fan blowing into the unit instead of drawing the heat out. That way the cold air comes in here, cools the top piece that we saw in the earlier part of the video. And then what it was doing was just coming straight out the back. But then I realized that it needed to be able to go back underneath and kind of cool the circuit board on the bottom. Just ever so slightly to help maybe it uh, last a little bit longer. What I decided to do, since the factory fan went on the back here, it sucked the heat out and it sucked it from the bottom and the top. There's like a little divider in there in between the two, and uh, that's how it did that. But with this, what it's doing is I don't have it pushed all the way back in the unit, so a lot of the heat is able to come out of the slot that I've left open here for it. And then an ever so slight amount of air gets to come wrap back around, blow through the bottom, and then come out these little side vents on the, on the bottom. The other thing you'll notice is I just hot glued some regular little old feet that I had uh, left over for some project that get, gets it up off the ground and up off any surface that I had it uh, lets it radiate heat a little bit better and so far I've ran it on um, pretty much continuous for the past week and a half two weeks and low power on the 70 centimeter side high power on the two meter side and I have not had any overheating issues whatsoever with it I will feel it when I'm at home to make sure that it feels like it, it should, and it's running real cool. It does uh, get warm to the touch, but it's not anything so major that there would um, be an issue. So I'm going to call this successful. Uh, one last thing, the fan that I, it came with, I started to connect it to the 
the other piece that's on the board like I told you in the uh, first part of the video. But after all, I decided to go with just the standard um, cord that came with the fan. Uh, what I do like about this is it's a super quiet fan. Uh, you can barely hear it running. You have to really be up close to it. I put together this uh, little barrel connector so that it would run just off of a standard uh, power adapter. The fan does come with some little resistors in the kit where you can knock the voltage down to like 6 or 8 volts and run the fan at a little bit lower speed. Or you can just vary the voltage with the power supply. I'm running a 9 volt output. Um, I picked up a power adapter for a guitar pedal that I think is supposed to be really low noise. So I think it... Um, I don't know if that's just uh, wishful thinking or, or not, but it uh, doesn't seem to introduce any interference, so that's good. Did notice one oddity when I was running the crossband is I had the um, tone set on the 70 centimeter side where you had to run that to be able to get the radio to open. Turned out that people, especially with the uh, FTM 400 radios and some other of the more high-end radios, um, it doesn't have the filtering for the tone. So they were able to hear the tone. Couldn't hear it on my 991A, but I sure could hear it on my FTM 400 and um, didn't want that. So as of right now, I'm running it without tone and uh, just hoping that nobody abuses it, which so far they haven't. So all seems to be well there. I also put together a little uh, stand for the face. I made it out of just a scrap piece of mahogany that I had laying around and got the angles in such a way that this fits right under the Yesu 991A when it's in its uh, upward position. And it's almost like it's one continuous little uh, unit there. So proud of that. Uh, I've got the uh, cord run into the, to the back of it. It all um, looks really nice sitting on the desk. The head unit piece sits um, on top of my power supply just for now so that I can uh, monitor how it runs. But so far, I've been uh, really proud of it and um, have been able to communicate a lot more mobile in my neck of the woods than I would have ordinarily. Uh, yeah, Simplex was just getting to the point to where it was too big of a headache to do mobile reliably. But this has really helped. And if I stay in my little uh, quadrant of the county, then um, I don't have any issue with the issue at all with it um, running on low power on the 70 centimeter side. Well, thanks everybody for watching. I hope that this uh, may help you or inspire you to uh, put together a weird project like this yourself. And as I uh, find the time and see fit and something that I think is going to be interesting, I'll keep trying to post the videos. That's it for now. Until next time. Thanks again.